Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys GIMP 2.10 and talk about some of the new features in this latest official release. So as you can obviously see just by looking at the screen here, it's got a dark theme out of the box, and in addition to that, they've revamped a lot of the icons here, much closer to something like Photoshop at the moment. Um, of course, the theme and the icons can be customized by going up to the edit menu and then preferences. So you'll be able to see that if you go to preferences interface theme here, that you'll be able to choose either dark theme, gray, light, or system. So just to quickly show, here's what gray theme take looks like. So here's what gray theme looks like, and then the classic light theme. To also point out here, the icon themes are selected separately. So to take the icon theme here and revert it back to something that's a little bit more compatible with light, we could say go to the legacy theme there or the color icon theme. But personally, I actually like the new theme, so I'm gonna stick on symbolic and the dark theme. Now there's at least a couple more settings worth mentioning here. If we go back up to system resources here at the top, so under the system resources tabs, you might notice a couple of new things here. First off, hardware acceleration. If you check use OpenCL, disabled by default, uh, what it will try to do is use your GPU to help speed up some of the performance inside of GIMP. So if you have a good graphics card, you might want to go ahead and check that. And in addition to that, number of threads to use here is something new because GIMP now supports multi-threading. So if you have any kind of modern computer that has multiple processors, it's going to be able to make a use of that by using multiple cores to process everything that's happening inside of GIMP. Now, I don't think you need to play around with this setting. I think it automatically set it to eight for my computer since I have a quad core processor that should be eight threads, I believe. Um, but if you want GPU acceleration, you can check that down there. There's also a new color management tab here, which I'm not super familiar with, but you can set settings here like optimize image display for speed, or you can change that down to precision slash color fidelity if you care more about the looks than how quickly everything's being displayed. They also have color profiles you can set up for RGB, that's red, green, blue, grayscale profiles, and the cyan, magenta, yellow, and uh, whatever K is, I think K might be black. So if you're really interested in controlling how color is displayed on your machine, you might have some interest in this new tab. Beyond that, if you go over to the layers tab over here on the right, and you have, let's say one layer, there's a mode section up here. Now, I believe that was always there, but there are a lot of options now. A a lot of these like vivid light and pen light I believe are new ones that they added in so once again kind of moving the program a lot closer to Photoshop and the number of features that are available out of the box without any plugins whatsoever so if you wanted to get some interesting effects you could just take an image and apply some of these blending modes and see what you can come up with of course if you just want the image as is just leave that on normal if you are playing around with colors and color curves, there's actually two options now for what kind of curves you're going to be dealing with. So the original classic version is just curves perceptually, which reading from the website straight up pretty much. These curves are modified by the actual gamma of your image. So basically reading straight from the website, what these perceptual curves are about is gamma adjusted curves. So using these, you'll get different results if you start playing around with the curves than this new option, adjust curves in linear light. So you can see using the same curves that you will get different results. And to me, just looking at it using the linear light curves, it makes the color changes look a lot more realistic than when you have the gamma adjusted ones. But at the very least, having a couple options for how your curves are set up is going to be pretty useful, I think, going forward. But just as a basic level, I think having a couple options here is going to make it interesting to see which can actually get you uh, better looks in the end when you go ahead and modify the colors on your image. So in the filters tab, there are a bunch of new effects as well. And I think some of these were in the development version for GIMP 2.9, which I don't think was actually ever released officially. It just went from GIMP 2.8 to GIMP 2.10. But there's a bunch of new filters to play around with here. So, so this vignette filter is pretty cool because it takes the corners of the image and has the color fade off into black. This is a look I think a lot of people kind of want to go for. Um, I've tried to create this effect manually before, but having it now as an effect is really nice. Also, they have things like the kaleidoscope effect here. So the kaleidoscope effect obviously gives you a really wild look for whatever image you're looking through. Obviously, obviously it's supposed 
to replicate the actual kaleidoscope toy or device, whatever you want to call it, um, that you can see through in real life, but making that into image form. And you're going to have a lot of options to play around with here, obviously. Very similar to that, if we go down to map and fractal trace, you can get some pretty wild effects on how your image looks compared to the original. So here's another new one, which is a lava effect that you can find under filters render lava. Also just notice spiral gimp. I don't believe I saw that one there before. So you have some new render effects, which can kind of automatically generate some cool looks for you. But the general idea is that there are some cool new filters you can check out in the menu there. So I believe that's most of the new interesting stuff inside of GIMP 2.10. The thing I'm most excited about is of course the dark theme out of the box with the improved icon set. It just looks quite a bit better than what we had before. But hopefully this video gave you a quick overview of what to expect in GIMP 2.10. And this is the official release by the way. So you can go ahead and download that on the main website, which is GIMP.org. So I I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.